Last year, when ASICS introduced the Nova Blast, I wondered what it would be like if ASICS combined that super squishy midsole with a carbon fiber plate. This year, ASICS is giving us just that, the brand new Magic Speed. But is this a case of giving the people what they want? Or should we have been more careful what we wished for? Fourteen point seven four miles, eight minutes, nine seconds per mile, one hundred and forty-eight beats per minute today. Going for our first run in the brand new Asics Magic Speed. For today's run, I went on a long run with a couple of marathon miles in there, marathon to all the way up to threshold pace for some of those miles, and then also threw in some strides so that I could put this shoe through its paces. And before I give my thoughts on this shoe, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that I purchased myself. No one sent them to me. No one's paying me to make this video. And no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the ASICS Magic Speed. First, let's go over some specs. The ASICS Magic Speed is a 34 millimeter stack height shoe with a five millimeter drop, giving us 24 millimeters of FF Blast midsole foam. It's the same foam, at least in name, as the Nova Blast and the Nova Blast 2. There is a carbon fiber plate in this midsole, but it's not a full length carbon fiber plate. It's a three quarter length carbon fiber plate. I believe it starts somewhere back here, right? And kind of like this white spot uh, in the outsole. And then it comes all the way forward to giving us a partial carbon fiber plate. Up top, we have an engineered mesh that is nice and breathable and a tongue that is made out of that same mesh. There's no padding in it at all. I absolutely love this tongue, although it's so minimal that it took a little bit of kind of like finagling to get it to sit exactly right. It reminds me, in fact, a lot of like the Vaporfly Next Percent. The tongue is just kind of like a little bit finicky. As far as the heel collar goes, there's not a lot in the back. There's a little bit of a bumper pad, a very small and thin one. There's not a lot of padding on the sides of the ankle at all. And as far as the heel counter goes, for an ASIC shoe, there's not a lot in here, but there is, it does go quite a bit high up on the ankle. So there is still a decent amount of structure. It's just not very thick. It's not quite as rigid in the back as an ASIC shoe tends to be. So it's kind of like splitting the difference of what ASIC shoes typically are as far as their trainers go and what I would love to see in like a racer when for a racer, I just like to see it super floppy. So it's kind of in the middle, a little bit restrained as far as what's going on here. On the outsole, we've got ASICS grip. So it's not their AHAR rubber, which is their most like durable material. It's ASICS grip, which I think is gonna be a little bit lighter and it's not full coverage so that they're gonna help with some of that weight in some of the areas where you might not need it quite so much. Speaking of weight, this entire shoe comes in at a weight of 7.9 ounces or 223 grams. So what is it like to run in the Magic Speed? It's a very firm ride. And I'm gonna say from the outset that this is not the shoe that I was hoping for. So maybe there, I just had too many expectations. I thought that this shoe was really going to be that shoe that made us forget about the fact that there wasn't a Peg Turbo last year and it's falling short in a couple of areas. The main thing being the midsole foam. It says FF Blast on the side of this shoe, but I don't believe it. It doesn't feel like FF Blast foam to me. It doesn't feel like the Nova Blast because the midsole is very firm, which is surprising because there's a lot of stack height in here. 34 in the heel, 29 in the forefoot, and I'm just not feeling like there's a lot in this shoe. By the end of the 14 miles that I ran today in this shoe, my foot definitely felt like I had been running in a much lower stack height shoe. It just wasn't all that forgiving. But that's not to say that it was all bad. On those miles where I was picking up the pace, uh, starting out some of those miles at kind of marathon pace and squeezing down to a little bit faster, getting down towards the threshold kind of mark, 
That's when the shoe really started to perk up, which is what I was expecting. I wasn't really expecting that this was gonna be like a recovery day type of shoe. And I'm, I would be willing to forgive a rougher ride at those slower paces if it really worked for me at faster paces. And to an extent it does. I didn't love it at marathon pace. I started liking it once I got kind of towards half marathon pace and down towards threshold speeds. That's where the shoe really started to work for me. That's where this midsole foam, which felt so stiff, really started to loosen up finally a little bit. And I felt like, okay, now I'm pushing into the foam hard enough where that firmness is kind of like matching the amount of force that's going into the shoe. And so that's when it started to really feel nice. Really though, for me, it wasn't until I started picking up the pace even further and doing some strides toward the end of the run where I was running at kind of between 5K and like mile pace. That's when I felt like the shoe was at its best. A lot of this thick stack height kind of disappeared and kind of the weight of the shoe disappeared and it just felt really nice to be able to go very quickly in the shoe. I felt like that was the only point where I really started noticing, okay, I'm getting a lot of the foam and I feel like I'm starting to feel some carbon spring in this shoe. So like that's when things really started to work for me together in a really nice way. But for like marathon pace and slower, I, I didn't really love the way that this shoe felt because it was so firm in that midsole. As far as the uppers goes, I was initially really excited when I looked at it. It seemed like a very thin upper. It seemed like it was gonna be pretty minimal. Asics uppers tend to be, in my opinion, really overbuilt. I don't know if it's a design thing or what, but it just always seems like there's a lot of layers that I don't really think that they need for a lot of their uppers. And this one seemed really stripped down, not even a lot of overlays on this shoe either. And I felt like it was gonna be fantastic for me. I thought that it was gonna be like some of the racing shoes that I've been running in from Asics, which I've been really loving the way that those fit. But I felt like this was just a little bit too snug. I felt like it was jamming on like my pinky toe and the next toe over just a little bit too much. And it just really didn't loosen up. Even getting the shoe wet, that's usually a great way to kind of loosen up an upper a little bit. And it didn't get any more comfortable no matter kind of what I did with the shoe. And so I just was feeling like I either need more room or I need this material to break in a little bit. And who knows, maybe over time with some break in that upper material could loosen up and become much more comfortable. But out of the box for the first run, after about 15 miles, it still just had a lot left to be desired in terms of the fit. As far as the heel cup goes, everything felt fine there, felt really secure in the shoe. So I'm loving everything about the fit of this shoe. I went with my regular size nine. It's just that in the toes, it just felt like it was a little bit like too aggressive of a curve over to get to this point at the top. And I just needed just a little bit more room in that toe box. As far as the outsole goes, the, the A6 grip works fantastically well. I got it through a lot of water and on some very slippery concrete. Had no problems either having grip or feeling like that I was going to slip at all. So like no concerns, felt very confident getting into some of the slippery stuff. So I think that this material is gonna work well. I think that they kind of could have been a little bit more aggressive in terms of what they shaved off in terms of this A6 grip, because after all, this is supposed to be kind of like your fast trainer slash racer. So I feel like the A6 grip that's on here seems to be more of a concession towards durability than it is a nod towards speed. So I wish that they would have done a little bit more just to take some of it out. I don't know how many like tenths of an ounce, if any, that would have shaved off, but I just, it feels like there's a lot here and that we don't really need it. And I just think overall, it's just a touch on the heavy side at 7.9 ounces. Now, another part of this shoe is that it has ASICS guide sole technology, which is what it's calling basically like it's rocker. So there's a very aggressive rocker. In fact, even if I just put this shoe on the table, it'll kind of rock back and forth because it doesn't really sit. It's designed to be very curved. So that way you're getting through the gait cycle very smoothly. Now, I felt like as far as like hitting back here, it is really soft back here. It's like the only place of the shoe that's very soft in this heel strike. So if you are using like the entire shoe, you're gonna get a nice smooth motion, but I don't feel like this is the fastest way to run in this shoe or the most comfortable necessarily. I felt really awkward when I tried to do that. Um, but instead, what I felt like with this rocker technology, I did like it, but it also reminded me a lot of the Evo Ride, which has the same guide sole technology in it. And for the entire run that I was running today, I just couldn't help but thinking, this shoe doesn't feel like a magic speed. It doesn't feel like 
uh, a carbon plated Nova Blast. To me, if you had told me that this was the Evo Ride 2, which is a shoe that I loved version one, I haven't tried version two yet this year, but if you told me this was the Evo Ride 2, I'd say, yeah, that makes sense. It seems a little bit firmer this year than it was last year. Maybe a little bit taller than it was last year. Maybe I'm just remembering it different. But yeah, this is a good Evo Ride too. This is a good update. So that's kind of like where I am with this shoe. It just feels very similar to that. And if you look at the stats, same stack height, uh, same heel drop, very similar look, very similar materials, it seems. And this shoe comes in at $150, which compared to like other carbon plated options out there or even carbon plated trainers that are out there, is a bit of a discount, um, but I just feel like I'm not sure that it's worth the premium that you'd be paying over a non-carbon plated shoe. My opinion may change on that after a couple more runs. Maybe this is just one of those weird shoes that even though it's 2021, the shoe maybe needs some break in. And so I'm 15 miles into the shoe or just shy of 15 miles into the shoe now. I'll put, give it a couple more runs and I'll update you guys on that for sure. Hit the subscribe button so you can get the notification when that video comes out. But uh, right now I'm having a hard time kind of like figuring out where does this shoe fit? It's a good shoe, but I'm not that excited about it because for another 10 bucks, you can pick up the Endorphin Speed or the Endorphin Speed 2, which I think is a fantastic shoe, a, a near perfect shoe that can do easy runs, that can do long runs, and that can do fast runs. The Magic Speed might do like 5K and faster better. I'm pretty sure it does. But for the all the other kind of running you might wanna do, I think that the endorphin speed is gonna be the better choice. I think that you can run the endorphin speed in a marathon. I did a 30 mile FKT attempt in those and it was an absolutely great shoe. I don't think that I'd wanna run like more than 20 miles at a time in the magic speed just cause that midsole is just very firm. The other thing is at that $150 price point, you also have shoes like the Hyperion Tempo with its DNA flash midsole, no carbon fiber plate in there, and it's a little bit firm of a midsole material as well. But I also feel like at marathon pace, half marathon pace up to threshold pace, where I think the Magic Speed, a lot of people that are buying the Magic Speed are gonna be using it for those levels of effort. I think the Hyperion Tempo does a better job. And then even if you compare it against other ASICs, like I was saying, is it worth the premium over a non-plated shoe? The Nova Blast 2 is on sale for $130. The Nova Blast 1 you could probably get for an even cheaper price than that. I think that unless you're using it for, I want to do 5K training and 5K racing in it, in that situation, maybe for some of you that are in the off season for high school cross country, like those kinds of runners, I think maybe the Magic Speed might be a better option. But for most people, like, I'd rather people buy the Nova Blast 1 or the Nova Blast 2 than the Magic Speed. So uh, unless something drastically changes in my next couple of runs, and again, I'll let you know if it does, unless something drastically changes, I'm just not sure that this is a shoe that really has a place either at the price point or with the level of performance that we're getting from it right now. So like there's just, something's not quite right about it. It's not delivering on the promise and the excitement of an FF Blast midsole with a carbon fiber plate that I think a lot of us were hoping for. I'm really sorry to say that to you guys because I was so looking forward to this shoe, but unfortunately, so far, I'm just not in love with the Magic Speed. So those are my thoughts on this shoe after just the first run. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or better yet, feel free to stop by the live stream that I do just about every day right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you there. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?